Hi, boys and girls. This is King Johnson. Uh, many of you have asked how I make these drawings, and so here's the stand-in actor I chose to play me in this video. Here's the tools uh, he uses. I don't know what they are. I, I just pick up a box of stuff and head off to the coffee shop. That's my method. And I just pick a few things out set it next to the, the watercolor paper there. So this is how you get started. You just make a mess, a complete mess. It's already off to a ruinous start. I don't know how I'm going to get myself out of this one. You get a brush. You get, see that brush is a thin brush. You pick, pick that up first. And you start getting some preliminary, you got to do this after you're relaxed. You can't do this if you're tensed up. So the first thing you got to do is get into a, uh, get in touch with your subconscious, you know, however you want to want to do it. And just have a good time, you know, don't t get at all tense. A lot of artists are tense. Ever been around them? Tense. They just tense up. It's like they're performing. You know, they they've got it all figured out in advance. They've drawn it out, and they they can't make a mistake. So, you know, I I never that never bothered me to begin with. I just started throwing stuff around. That's how I got started. That's what I was taught to do. So eventually, you you build up. I don't know what I'm doing here though at all, because see, I have no memory. I have muscle memory, but what's going on is. Uh, I'm trying to figure it out. It's going too fast. I, 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 I get there's there's uh, you got to get get a sense of where the uh, main color shapes are going to go first of all, like the big yellow area, the big uh, loop there. That's the uh, compositional element you got to establish first. You know, I taught art when I was in undergraduate and grad no graduate school. I should have been teaching at an undergraduate because I knew more than the professors, but that's just my natural arrogance. You got to have, you got to be really arrogant and, and that takes, takes getting used to, you know, because you got to deal with all these other egomaniacs and just wash that all away. You know, wash all the criticisms. You're, you're, your new self now, when you're doing the King Johnson tried and true method of, of self-expression, you have no preconceived notions of what you're going to do. And then, let's see. See, I've already switched to an ink pen. I don't know why, but it seemed like it was the right thing to do at that time. So you got to get all the stuff you're going to do ready. So you have a little bit of... Uh, you have some options in which to uh, rearrange the elements that are in, in front of you. This is how we talk in art school. First of all, you got to make sure that it's 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 within the jurisdiction of avant-garde theory. So that's that's this. See, it's it's called expressionist. It's expressionism, and it's surrealism, and it's uh, it's futuristic, cubistic. It's a synthesis. It's like you know Picasso's analytic period and synthetic period. And this is the psychoanalytic, synthetic, Picassoid. Uh, Matissean, a melding of the mind meld of modernism with a modern guy like myself. So you got to keep it cool, though. Whatever you do, don't get too overexcited because then the drinking starts and then pretty soon you're, you're wrapping your uh, fender around a tree or something like that. Don't ever draw and drive or do it your cell phones and drive. Only professionals like myself can do things like that. So don't don't go imitating my bad habits, my bad driving habits and, and my drinking habits, which I've cut down now. I'm cutting down to, to uh, seltzer water. That should be around here somewhere. Now I, I try to do these in a packed cafe, you know, like this one, uh, people are all around, you know, kids, because that's where I draw my inspiration. You know, I talk to the kids, I talk to the adults, they, 
come by the table, you know. I can, unlike Jackson Pollock, he's very terse. You, you can't get a word out of him when he's try, trying to work because he's got to concentrate. I don't concentrate at all. That's you got to free the, the your your mind and and uh, just keep with the rhythm of the beat. You know, uh, it looks like it's I don't know. It's still in trouble. It's it's almost hopeless at this point. I don't know what I'm going to do with a lot, a lot of areas. Something is happening, though, in the middle section here. So that, that's a good idea. You know, start in the middle and work your ways out. In this, in this method, and this is just one of the many methods that I teach. This is the uh, centrifugal force, is what I like to call this. It's almost similar to a centering. Uh, you know, like they center the clay or they get to the center of the storm and a mandala something like that you got to keep you know the storm is raging but you got to keep your balance you got if you get unbalanced then you're you you're going to lose the, uh, the you're going to lose the rhythms that are maintaining the craft you know the vessel that you're operating without it flying all apart at the seams it can you know you get start throwing the paint around and pretty soon you're claude monet you know and, and or george o'keefe or somebody like that and willem de kooning they all use in this method is that it's very sloppy at work you know to, in my humble opinion so i don't i don't want to get it too you know it can get sloppy at the beginning but i don't want to stay sloppy i got to get the sloppiness out of it that's what they said you know all the time i was too sloppy I had paint all over the floor, paint all over myself. Nobody likes a sloppy guy. They had junk all over the studio. I had dust bunnies. <laughs> What's a dust bunny? I, I never understood why, why it was a dust bunny. Why, why is it a bunny? A dead bunny? Like dead rabbits? Like the... Uh... Anyway, my mind wanders. The, my mind wanders around and around and around. And the things that come up in the drawing... Or it could be something I saw, you know, like a guy with a black glove that morning and, and, and you know, showing a Freemason is showing uh, symbols, Freemasonic symbols. And why is the guy wearing a black glove? Isn't that interesting? Instead of, I've always, when I handled art, I'd wear a white glove because I was at the Art Institute, School of the Art Institute, I'd go to the printmaking room and they'd make me wear a, a white glove so I wouldn't get all my sweaty, dirty oils and everything in the... Uh, you know, on these Goya prints and Ensor prints and Odilon Radon, Radon, Ray, Ray, uh, I forget how you pronounce his last name, it's French. So Henri is Henry to me, you know, I call him Henry Matisse or Henry uh, Rousseau or whatever, or Rousseau, you know, I, I, I have troubles with the French pronunciation, so pardon my French when it, I'm trying to pronounce it. Anyway, where was I? Let's see, it's, it's so, you know, drawing is, is so slow, but if you speed it up, <laughs> that's my mind goes very fast, I, I, I can tell you that much, so I have to keep up with it. So let's see, okay, something is happening up in the upper left corner. Oh, you got to do a lot of patterns, people like that. I like it too, so that's why I do them. And I'm obsessive, so, you know, obsessive compulsive. Because that's my mania. I've got some kind of mental illness that, that makes me, uh, it, it's terrible. It makes me talk obsessively while I'm drawing. So in, in, my, in my mind, I talk. All these guys do it. You know, Keith Jarrett and Glenn Gould, the piano players, you're watching their mouth and moving. That's what they're doing, they're talking. I, I talk too, but I usually talk under my breath. Or I talk... I pray. It's called praying. I, I, I'm trying to have a state of connection to the divine, to the, to the limitless, inf, infinite, creative source of the universe. I call him God. You know, I call him uh, the Old Testament God, you know, with the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But, you know, everybody has their own way of uh, conceptualizing a deity. And... I, you know, I'm agnostic on that front, but I I just have an intuitive, because I was raised Roman Catholic, that's, I understand it. 
So I don't understand the other ones, but I don't have really, I, I can joke and jibe about it. But, you know, why, why not? I don't know. I don't know who God is any more than what I know in the Bible, and that's what, what I stick with. And then I just worry worry about getting the drawing to work. You know, I've got other things on my mind than uh, you know politics, religion. I I really I, I get out of the, the sex machine stuff because I don't want to have my you know a lustful like oh that's nice that that looks oh that's the, so. <laughs> I, there's nothing sexy about my work. I, I hope if anybody sees sexy stuff going on in here, that better alert me and I'll, uh, I'll uh, call the brain police and tell them, you know, I got a, a new drawing that I want you to see. Who are the brain police? You ever hear that song? They're like the thought police and Zappa songs or they're, they're your brain. Your thought dreams could be seen. They put my head inside a guillotine. No, I don't have... They don't, why would they put my head inside a guillotine? I don't have any weird thought dreams, you know? My thought dreams are, are like some kind of uh, cartoon paradise where everybody is uh, floating. You got me floating round and round. I've always got these uh, rock songs in my head, but I don't really know the lyrics. That's the problem. Like, I know... You got me floating round, round, always up. You never let me down. The amazing thing is you turn me on now. Okay, good. Good enough. But but it, it's not really that interesting hearing it 50,000 times. So I, I invent different kind of lyrics that, that go with the songs. And they're nonsense lyrics like Lewis Carroll. That's who my mentor was or is. He's still my mentor because I, I have a lot of things in common with Lewis. For one thing, I'm King Johnson, and who knows what my real name is, and it's all—it's always going to be a mystery to me, because what's in a name anyway? It's not my identity. I am a man of many, many, many disguises, like a master of disguise. Except I've got to just keep uh, the wisdom tr tradition alive. This so this is the old school. You know, it's old OG, old school, whatever you want to call it. It's the old school method. The old school method, you use old school techniques. You use old school, like that's a that's what's called a crow quill pen, except it's got a manga pen. You get them from jet pens, and you get those big nibs. The other one is a tiny crow quill nib, and then the brush is like a dagger brush, and it's synthetic acrylic fiber so it holds it it's the acrylic things are so much better unfortunately than the old ones because they get they wear a lot faster so the the dagger ones uh they hold their point for forever as long as you just wash them out it's pretty easy all this stuff you can buy for 50 cents you know i, I mean it's not two cents worth of, of and i have no sense in the first place so you get this uh couple bottles of ink, pens, not going to cost you anything at, at, at all. And you can get them, uh, you know, I got my materials this morning for about four bucks at the dollar store. My crayons at the dollar store and Sharpie points, because that's another story I'll, I'll get into in the next, in part two of my best drawing ever, because I like to be confident. Like, this is the best one until I decide it's crap and I have to do the next one, which will be my best one. So this goes from being my best drawing ever to my worst drawing ever when I have to start the new one. I don't know if other people think like that, but but I, I used to I think, you know, I didn't quite get, I missed the mark here by, by a, a thousand yards. So I just let it go. You know, at a certain point, I let loose of it. And, and that's, there it is. That's part, that, that's, that's how far I got. A couple, couple of hours, maybe, something like that. The cafe. And then, you know, I get ready to exit the cafe because I got to find a new table. There, there we go. Bye. Ha this is Happy New Year's party. Because I was in a New Year's spirit here. It's a Panera Bread, the, the remodeled one. Okay, bye-bye from part one. Bye-bye from part one. It went, it, I ran out of space. <laughs> I spaced out.